Hello everyone, you are welcome back to YC++ tutorial. So we are still on the basic structure of C++. In our previous lesson, we learned about the header file. And today, we are going to look at the namespace. Using namespace STD. And by the way, the STD stands for standard. Okay, so in our previous lesson, I've already told you guys that C++ is really very, very rich and very huge programming language. And because of that, we have developers who have developed some libraries for us to use them in our project. And this libraries is developed by an individual developer or programmers. So this means that there can be a conflict between their name variables, their object names, their functions, and all those kind of things. And for you to solve this conflict, this is where namespace comes in. So before we dive into this, let's take this scenario. Let's say that you are in a class. and this class, there are two boys with the same name, Kelvin. For you to identify them or for you to identify one of them, you must go much further to use either their, their compression or their area they stay or his father to identify them. This thing can also happen in C++. So C++, when you're trying to create your application, mostly you will add different libraries to your project. And these libraries comes with your different namespace at the same time, different entities in it. And there could be that there is uh, some name that one library or two library are using the same name and there can be a conflict between that names. So this is where you must use namespace in your project. So now let's understand namespace as a whole. So when you say the namespace, a namespace is a declarative region that provides a scope to an identifier inside it. And I also have another definition here saying that a namespace is a collection of related names or identifier. And these identifiers can be functions, classes, and also variables, etc., which help us to separate these identifiers from similar identifiers in another namespace or the global namespace. So you could see that namespace help us to prevent conflicts between entities. And for you to use a namespace, we have three ways that you can use a namespace. We have the directive namespace, we have the declarative namespace, and also the inline namespace. So now, let's start with the directive namespace. So with the directive namespace, you can find them they are with the header files. So using namespace std is what a directive namespace. And when you add a namespace like this, it means that everything inside that namespace, all the entities inside that namespace is available to you for you to use them in your projects. And we also have the declarative namespace. So with a declarative namespace, if let's say you want to use a single namespace in that entity, then you can now want to use what the declarative namespace. So with a declarative namespace, it goes with what the namespace, the name of what that namespace, and then we use what the double column. And this double column is the scope resolution operator. And then you specify the function or the class or the variable that you want to use in that namespace. And we also have the inline namespace. So with the inline namespace, it goes with the entities directly in your project. And it's more advisable that we use this kind of what entities to solve what the conflict between entities. So now let's open our IDE and try examples and how we can create 
and namespace and also how the conflicts can happen okay so open your ide so right now this is my ide and i have the default structure in it so we have the hash include io streams using namespace std and we also have the int main over here and we are talking about the using namespace std and i'm saying that the using namespace std the std stands for standard okay and this is what the directive namespace meaning that everything inside this std is now available to us so the c in the c out and also the end line they are all available to us and we can use them in this project so let's try with an example so c out is coming from what the standard library is now available to us and i can use it to to display a message to the user so let's say that i'm trying to display this message saying that you are hello you are welcome to code day okay you are welcome to code day and we have the end line too okay so right now you guys can see that i'm using the c out at the same time the end line and they are all available to me so you can see that this are what the global i'm using what the global version of what namespace okay so right now everything inside the std is now available to me and i can use them in my projects when i run this project there is no error in it so now let's now use the declarative namespace so with the declarative namespace this is where you want to use a single namespace or you want to use a single entity inside that namespace okay so with that one we are going to use the namespace plus the double column over here is the scope resolution operator the scope resolution operator and right now i can specify what the c out like this so this means that i'm trying to use what the c out coming from the std standard mode library okay so right now this c out is now what available to me for me to use it in my project but the end line is not available to me so when i run this we are going to get an error saying that the end line was not declared in this scope okay so right now for you to declare this using the same method then we must also specify what is using the std again and also the scope the std and also with the scope resolution operator then i can now specify with the end line fantastic and right now when i run this project there is no error in it okay now let's try the inline method so with the inline method the standard library goes with what goes with the entity directly okay so right now i'm saying that what std and then i'm specifying with the scope using the scope resolution operator and also with the entity inside of the scope so i am going to do the same thing for the end line too so right now when i run this project we are not going to get any error in it fantastic so now guys let's now look at the conflicts between namespace with the example that i gave you guys let's try to have that example right here and see how conflict happens in namespace okay so right now let's that i want to declare let me go back to the original state okay so let's that i want to declare a namespace two namespace that this namespace is going to have the same variable but their data is going to be different okay so for you to declare a namespace we use the word we use the word namespace and then we specify what the name and so let's that with this one is going to be one and then i will use the carry bracket and he said i can create what a string so a string called students students name students name and then with this one i'm going to assign it with miracle so this is what a namespace right and i'm going to create another namespace so namespace two and this one is going to have a string with the same variable students student name and the data is going to be kelvin right
Okay. So now we have two namespace over here. And inside this namespace, we have what? A variable student's name. And this variable here is having the data miracle. And the namespace two is also having the same variable name, but the data is Kelvin. So now for us to print this information over here, we need to first declare them. So for us to declare them, we are going to use what? The directive namespace. So new namespace, and then I'll call for the first one. And then using another namespace again, then I'll call for the second one. Okay. So right now inside the main function over here, I can now specify that C out, C out student C out student name is and then I will use the student student's name like this. So right now you can see that we are having what a red line over here, meaning that right now there is some conflict between what the namespace over here. So namespace one at the same time namespace or two. There is a conflict between it because they are they are they, they all have the same variable name okay so when i run this project you could see that we are having what, an error in it and the error is saying that the reference to the namespace is what ambiguous meaning that right now they don't have one what data or right now there is some kind of conflict between confusion but between these two namespace so that is why we always say that if you are creating a large project make sure that you are not using the directive namespace because with the directive namespace you are going to find out some issues with it like this okay so you can go with so the inline namespace okay so let me get rid of this and i can use so the inline namespace so with the inline then i can specify one and then i will use what the scope resolution operator like this and right now over here i have solved the conflict between these names okay so when i run this project we are going to see hello miracle we are going to see what the student's name is what's miracle and also hello welcome so let me copy the same thing copy and then i will do the same thing for the second one so when the second one too is having a namespace too okay so when i run this project we are going to have the student's name is miracle the student's name is kelvin and the hello welcome to code Day. So these are the few things that you need to understand about namespace. So right now, this namespace is very important in C++ that you guys need to understand it very well. I've teach you how you can add your namespace into your project. I've said that we have three ways that you can add a namespace, either by the directive or declarative or the inline. But mostly, it is more advisable when you are creating a large project that you need to go for what the inline namespace to avoid any conflict between the entities in the namespace. Okay, and then we are all also look at how you can solve this conflict using what the inline what's namespace. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. If you have any question concerning namespace, please leave a comment, and I will surely reply. Goodbye and have a nice day.